Hi, I'm here with Janine Frost. Her latest book is Twice Tempted. It's a New York Times bestseller and a must read. She is here today to answer some questions that were submitted through Goodreads. And thank you, Goodreads, for letting us have this opportunity. And uh, she got hundreds of questions. So, so we're not here for 24 hours because it would take her 24 hours to answer them all right now. Uh, we, we have sort of some of them, um, some select ones that really cover a lot of what you guys have asked. So now I'm gonna ask the first question and let it go to Janine. All right, so Tiff asked, after you're done with Cat and Bones and Vlad and Leela, will you continue to write about the Night Huntress world? Um, I, I expect to, I still have um, several characters that I am interested in exploring their stories more and um so that's a that's a probably close probably leaning toward it definitely um i can't say who yet because right now my head is still wrapped up in writing vlad and layla and cat and bones and finishing those series and when i'm done with that it's kind of whatever character um in my head that's demanding the loudest to have their story told, that's who will win. And that that is my real scientific process of choosing who to write about next. <laughs> well, that is, that's a good answer. Uh, <laughs> tune, you know, fans stay tuned. So <laughs> the next question is from Stacy, And she asks, has Maximus been cut off from Vlad's line? And is there any chance he can redeem himself to Vlad and Leela? Um, well, this one um, is a little, if you haven't read Twice Tempted, it's a little bit of a spoiler. Um, but yes, at the end of Twice Tempted, Maximus is pretty much cut off from Vlad's line. And um, the, the Night Prince series is a trilogy. So I, along with readers, am hopeful that he will be able to uh, do something honorable enough to get his way back in. Because I think his character, he's overall a decent guy. He just... Um, you know, he, he, he screwed up and he's paying the consequences of that right now. But I would like to see, I would like to see him be able to redeem himself. But since I'm an organic writer, I don't have it all worked out in my head yet. So I don't know if he will yet. So I'm kind of waiting with readers, you know, once I sit down and write the book to see if he can pull that off. Well, that is very exciting. So more to be continued. <laughs> um, CC asked, and <laughs> CC asked, NH, the Night Huntress series, uh, will be over soon. And she is extremely sad about that, as, <laughs> as we all are. How do you feel about that? And are you ending the series with a bang? Um, well, that's my goal, to end the series with a bang. Um, I'm excited about ending it because I've known this ending in my head for years. I think I told my editor about it three to four years ago how I wanted to end the series. So every book that I've been writing has been bringing Cat and Bones closer to their resolution. And so I'm right now excited and looking forward to giving it to them because it's been what they've been working really, you know, hard toward, even if in the books that are out now, they don't realize it. But later, once the final book is out, um, readers will be able to see the breadcrumbs that were dropped and um, how it ties in. And I'm hoping that they are, are happy with the conclusion. And um, I am also sure if my characters were real, they would be really relieved to then get a break from my keyboard. <laughs> I've been doing mean things to them. Um, well, you know, that you have been doing mean things to them. But <laughs> every author seems does. to be really into the mean things you've been doing to them. So I think I think you're doing something right. All right. <laughs> So, uh, speaking of doing mean things to your characters, Kiwi asks, are any of the characters in your books like yourself? Um, you know, it's funny. The character that I would probably most be able to hold up and say, yeah, this is more like me in real life, is a side character that barely shows up in the Secret Night Huntress book named Noah. Uh, you know, he's an animal lover. He's kind of a, a quiet, simple guy. And, uh, you know, switch the gender. That's me. Um, you know, I, I'm not, 
I'm not an adrenaline hound. Uh, you know, a good evening for me is is home with the husband and the dogs, uh, you know, watching TV mm -hmm. and ordering ordering in delivery. So that's my idea of a good time. And uh, that and reading and writing. So I'm I'm very unlike my characters as far as how they go out and they they hunt danger and they um, you know, they kick ass and they do all those sorts of things. Um, you know, if, if I do my uh, if I do my exercise bike for 20 minutes, I think I have I have really put forth a workout. So <laughs> so I'm not a lot yeah. like my characters at all. I, I'm kind of the same way, too. Um, but except for substitute cat for dogs. But uh, I <laughs> I sympathize particularly with the uh, the exercise bike, uh, <laughs> the reluctance to exercise bike. So um now, this is a really, this, this yeah. is a great question, and this question was asked in a different iteration a couple of times. Um, do you listen to music when you write? And do you have a certain album that helps the writing process along? Um, I do listen to music when I write, and I don't have a one particular album, but every time before I start a book, I compile a playlist of songs for that particular book. And there are um, things that kind of remind me of characters for one reason or another, or just types of um, beat or tempos that reflective of a mood, you know, fast, um, kind of louder for maybe an action scene, you know, slower, um, a little more acoustical, maybe if it's um, an emotional scene. And uh, I, will, I will listen to that same playlist whenever I write that book and also whenever I go back and edit that book. So I'm treating myself like Pavlov's dogs. Um, whenever I hear those grouping of songs, it's my cue to sit down and write a particular book. And even, you know, 10 years later, I'll listen to a song while I was writing my debut novel, and it will remind me instantly of that book. So I've kind of conditioned myself to write to a particular set of songs. And it's just helpful for me. And it also, you know, the music drowns out background noise. I mean, any little thing going on, your house, your neighborhood can distract you. Writers are great for getting distracted and getting up from our keyboards. <laughs> um, so it helps, you know. Writers, <laughs> lots of people are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it, it helps drown out those other noises and try and keep me focused. Um, that That is awesome. And, uh, you know, maybe maybe someday uh, we will, you know, release some of those songs uh, for your for your uh, fans to hear, like. For... Oh, I, I actually, um, I, I put up playlists right around the time every book releases. I will post the playlist for that book. So if you go to my website blog, you'll find Twice Tempted's playlist. Um, within the past month, I think I posted it. So um, it's it's up there in the other books. And you know, music tastes are personal. So some people will say, oh wow, that doesn't remind me of that book at all. I thought of yeah. this band, this song, this band, that song, and and that's great. Um, you know, it's. Mm -hmm. It's it's just what what I listen to. It's not what everyone has to listen to and enjoy to it's enjoy not, the book. It's not to the book. It's just yeah. it's a little insight into you creating the book. Yes. Uh, very cool. So we have another question, um, and Francesca asks, "How did you start? I mean, were you rejected by any agency?" 